I am Chad Beamer with Quintus Technologies, and we have another episode of Quintus Conversations. Today we have Doug Puerta. Doug, can you introduce yourself and provide the audience a little bit of background on, on you as well as the company you represent? Sure. Morning, Chad. So, Doug Puerta, I'm the CEO of the Stack Metallurgical Group. Uh, we're based in Portland, Oregon. We have four facilities around the, uh, the western United States, uh, largest site being here in Portland. We have uh, heat treat and uh, anodizing facilities in Spokane, Washington, and Salt Lake City, Utah. And then our uh, newest facility is Stack Hip down in Albany, Oregon. So I, I came to Stack in uh, April of 2018. I uh, actually grew up in the heat treating business. My father is a heat treater back in Pennsylvania. And so uh, upon moving to Oregon in 2008, I naturally sought out the heat treaters in the area to get to, get to meet the, the folks there. And so I've known Stack for quite some time, known the owners, known the team. Uh, Stack's got a great reputation here in the West Coast. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a great company to be a part of. And uh, we're having a lot of fun now being uh, members of the HIP Club. <laughs> so you, you spoke a little bit about the history and some of the, the services you, you offer. What sparked interest uh, at Stack to invest in hot isostatic pressing as a service? You know, ultimately, what let's stack to look at adding hip capacity is uh, it's really the market. And it's really like many things we've done over the years. It's a function of our customers asking us to do it. Mm -hmm. So here in Oregon, uh, we actually have four titanium foundries. And if you add up the remaining titanium foundries in North America, I don't think you have more than four additional. And so there's a lot of titanium castings being produced here in Oregon, uh, mainly for the aerospace industry. And as we started talking to these clients, uh, as, aerospeak, as aerospace was in its peak, uh, we came to realize that there really was a need for additional hip capacity here in, uh, in Oregon. I mean, these castings are being produced and shipped out of state for a, for a step which is critical to the manufacturing process. Mm -hmm. And that's what, uh, that's what ultimately led us to, to look at hip and decide to get into the hip market. Interesting. Um, and, you know, once that decision was made, there's a number of companies that offer hot isostatic pressing equipment, um, few, but a number. Can you speak to the reasons for going with Quintus Technologies for your HIT products and services? Yeah, I can. You know, you know, even though we consider ourselves to be pretty good heat treaters to really understand equipment, heat treating equipment, uh, and understand the whole concept of heating up and cooling down, uh, we did acknowledge that, that HIP was going to be quite a, bit, quite a bit different for us. And there, there's definitely different paths you can go down to enter the hip market, but we really needed a partner. Um, you know, we, uh, we started talking to Quintus early on in our evaluation, and Quintus worked with us to develop a business plan. Uh, Quintus really offered us a full turnkey solution to enter the hip industry. Uh, so it, it was a real partnership. Um, you know, as we were uh, beginning to work with clients and uh, develop those relationships, having Quintus as a partner carried a lot of weight. It all helped to offer them a lot of assurances that we weren't going to fumble. You know, we we're going to enter the market successfully and bring this capacity to the market. And, you know, with Quintus being recognized as really a global leader in high pressure solutions and equipment, uh, that, that carried a lot of weight for us as we went to market and, and entered HIP. So for the audience, can you describe what products and, and services uh, you're currently using in your operations, uh, specifically around hot isostatic pressing? So our first hip unit was a Quintus 286. This is Quintus's largest hip unit. And uh, as we started looking at our path to, uh, to launch stack hip, we, we kind of had a more modest sized hip in mind as we started talking to clients. Yeah, unfortunately, the clients needed a big, a big hip. They needed large hip capacity. There's a lot of large structural aircraft and engine components being produced locally. And if we weren't able to process anything being produced, then that it kind of worked against our value proposition. And so we, uh, that that was our first tip. It's a it's a 63 inch working zone. It's just it's a massive piece of equipment. And so that was great. Uh, we, we added that capacity and uh, people were very happy. Clients were happy. Uh, but unfortunately, what happened then is uh, you know, we had other clients coming along saying, I have, I have something smaller or I don't have quite as much of it. And, you know, the 286 is wonderful, but it takes a lot to fill it. And so uh, as we start having new customers come along, we realized we needed something 
a bit smaller so we could accommodate people who did who had a unique cycle or a unique uh, a unique need from a hip perspective and so our, our second hip unit which is just actually finished commissioning recently is the uh, qih 122 uh, so you know, we call it a small hip uh, quintus calls it a medium hip um, <laughs> and we call it small simply because next to our 286 it looks it looks quite a quite small in comparison yeah. But it's technically a medium hip. It's got a 26 inch working zone. And uh, we're very excited. It's got all the bells and whistles, the latest technologies. It, it's going to enable us to get into the high pressure heat treating market. And so we're, we're very excited to bring this capacity to market as well. That is exciting, uh, both from a capacity standpoint, but also flexibility of what you can offer with uh, hip equipment, um, especially the hot isostatic pressing, high pressure heat treatment that can be performed. Doug, you spoke a little bit about the large hip as well as the uh, the medium hip, specifically the QH-122. Uh, that system offers high pressure heat treatment. Uh, can you speak in a little bit more detail about that offering and what benefits it may present to customers and collaborations that you're involved in? Yeah, the, um, the high pressure heat treatment is very interesting and it makes a lot of sense. You know, as a, as a metallurgist, you know, there's a lot of added value to combining the hip and heat treat cycle you know one you you know ultimately whether you're just heat treating or hipping or, or com combining the two you never want things at temp any longer than they need to be and so by combining these two cycles we shorten the overall time at temperature uh, which also plays into the lead time uh, value proposition you know as aerospace gets going again and uh, aerospace is all about turn time and lead time so yeah, we certainly have the ability at stack. We can hip something, uh, take it over a vacuum furnace, put it in the vacuum furnace for an additional cycle. But if we can combine those two cycles and save 10 or 12 hours, get the parts back to the customer, uh, it's going to be well received. So really anything we can do to get a product in and out of stack is something we're, we're very interested in. We're seeing a lot of interest in HPHT, uh, high pressure heat treat from, uh, from our air clients, from uh, a lot of our additive clients are, are now getting to that as well. So it seems to be becoming better understood and getting a lot of interest. So it's great to have that, that capability here at Stack as well. Yeah, we're, we're seeing that trend as well in the application center. And with you having a, a 286 as well as a, a 122 under your roof, it probably gives you the most flexibility in the, the US from a, a HIP standpoint. So very exciting. Great, okay. yeah, we hope so. Uh, shifting gears a little bit, it, it's definitely been a challenging last 12 to 24 months with the uh, pandemic. What is the biggest challenge the pandemic has placed on Stack and the heat treat industry? Yeah, the, the last uh, year and a half now has just not not been fun. Um, you know, we're fortunate Stack is pretty diversified, and we have a number of customers who actually did quite well through the pandemic. But we are uh, we do quite a bit of aerospace work, and that market did not hold up well, as everyone knows. So really, the biggest challenge was simply managing through the uh, the downturn. Uh, I'm not sure we've seen anything like this, and uh, maybe maybe once in my lifetime. But this this was pretty pretty sharp and very sudden. Uh, so that, that placed a lot of stress in the business. And then, of course, the timing was just really unfortunate. You know, we commissioned the uh, the 286 uh, really just before COVID became a thing. And so here we were coming to market with a ton of new capacity and uh, the market went completely the opposite direction we expected. So that that was, that was pretty challenging. It's very uh, frustrating is probably a good enough word. It's very frustrating to, uh, to have a big, big, beautiful new piece of equipment and just to see it sitting there, not idle, but uh, obviously far less utilized than we expected. Are you, though, starting to see any trends that are indicating a, a positive recovery with the aerospace industry? Uh, we're seeing trends. Uh, you know, the um, there's a lot of inventory in the system. And so mm -hmm. the inventory can be an aircraft parked out at Boeing or out in the desert. Or it can be castings that were produced before the orders all, all got put on hold. And so, you know, clearly the inventory is, is, is being reduced or eliminated. In, in mm -hmm. most cases, so certain areas we've seen get very busy very quickly. Uh, other areas are just now starting to come around and, and orders are starting to pick up again. But really, it was a matter of getting all the inventory out, which uh, is happening. 
uh, but the recovery is the recovery is real. Um, you know, we're we're seeing a very consistent story from starting at the top at Boeing and Airbus and all the way down to their their supply chain. I mean, the or, the work is the work is coming. The orders are coming. And so we're preparing for it. Uh, it's not rebounding as quickly as it went the other direction, which is probably okay. I'm not sure we could we could uh, manage uh, to ramp up again as quickly as when we went the other direction. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, the, the recovery is real, and and we're we're seeing it. So that's that's very encouraging. Outside of aviation for HIP, what industry is showing the most opportunity and growth for you currently? You know, it's interesting as we as we came to as we came online in uh, early 2020 with our HIP, the aerospace went offline. Uh, we had to scramble a little bit to find other opportunities for HIP, and so th- there are other other users out there. Everything from uh, obviously medical implants to additive manufacturing. It's a lot of large industrial castings, power generation, nuclear. A lot of people using, uh, or what, I guess I would say, a lot of people making what I describe as quality critical components that require HIP. And so those those uh, areas have done well, and we've developed some new relationships in those areas. Is there anything else you'd like to discuss as part of this conversation? Yeah, you know, the additive manufacturing market is uh, is really growing as well. Uh, you know, there's there's quite a few companies here in Oregon and into Washington, California that are they're printing parts, and uh, you know it seems like at least uh, the vast majority of those parts are requiring HIP. So we've, yeah. we've developed some nice partnerships there as well. And it would seem we've seen a trend here as well with the uh, the AM side uh, where there's a stronger interest for high pressure heat treatment. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of opportunities are presented um, with that industry. Yeah, we're very excited to offer high pressure heat treatment. It uh, it makes sense in a lot of ways. You know, mm-hmm. as the uh, as the markets recover, with aerospace in particular recovering, you know, lead times are just so important. And you know we we have the capability of in stack to hip something and then do a heat treat process on it, but it takes time. Uh, the ability to put this into our hip unit and to you know capture the heat treat cycle uh, at the end of the hip cycle, you know shorten that lead time, get parts back to customers. It's only a good thing. And so we've we we're, we're talking to a number of customers about this, both in aerospace and outside of aerospace. I think there's there's a lot of interest. Yep. Yep. And I guess as more data and knowledge is being gained on the high pressure heat treatment route, you know, if you've got the lead time benefit, there's also some indications of a performance benefit. So um, optimizing these uh, materials for what you mentioned, critical, you know, quality components, it, it's definitely of interest. Um, exactly. Doug, it's been a, a pleasure meeting you and getting to know more about you and Stack Metallurgical Group and their offerings. In the ending, I'd like to thank you for your your time and insight. Thank you very much. Glad to be here.